Hi everyone. Well, it's time for our August book of the month. We had some really good choices this month. I'm excited to hear what you got this month. Hi everyone. I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. To my viewers, my subscribers, thank you guys so much. It means so much to me that you're able to take a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're new to my channel and you haven't quite had a chance to subscribe yet, maybe you're afraid at this point to subscribe if you've seen my last few videos. But anyway, regardless of that, I hope you take a quick second hit that little red subscribe button over there. I would love to have you come back and join us for future videos. Your comments, of course, are always welcome. And I hope everyone gives this video a thumbs up. That really helps promote my channel and get it out there so I can meet some more lovely people like yourselves. And today we are doing the Book of the Month Club for August. And you know, I'm as far behind as I am on YouTube. I am farther behind in my reading. I cannot wait to either just give up trying to get caught up and get back to reading every night or go like the Dickens, get caught up. I miss reading so much. It is just such an, a relaxing experience and it just, your mind is just engaged and you just, you, it's like you make a movie in your head when you're, you're reading a book and it just keeps your mind activated and it just, I just love it. I cannot wait to get back into it. But anyway, the book of the month club. So I've been in this for a while now and it's easy enough to skip a month. Um, if you use my link below, um, your first book is going to be $5. After that, it would be, I think it's $15.99 now. Shipping is included. If you go to their website, you don't need anybody's link, but if you do sign up to their website, I think it's $9.99 for your first book. So I think that's what the difference is. Once you've been in it for a while, you get different freebies. You get a free birthday uh, book, the month of your birthday. Uh, you get um, to pick, uh, they also like, the end of the year they have some finalists for the book of the year uh, and you get to get one of those for free as well so a lot of perks for being in this club and I just I'm just really enjoying it it's easy enough to skip you can get extra books if you listen to anybody else's reviews or anything like that and you're like oh my gosh that book sounds good you can put it on your TBR list so that you can go back and reference that later if you want to add an extra book or if a book didn't hit you for the choices that they gave you that month then you can always pick one of those as well so anyway for this month they gave us uh, five choices so we had a magical realism. We had a memoir. Never, I don't think I've ever seen a memoir in my choices. Two literary fictions, thriller, and a horror. You know, this was a hard, hard choice for me with both thrillers and horrors in there. So we'll go through the choices here and then let me know which one you think I picked. Alrighty, so the first one was a magical realism book, and it was called Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. When an anthropologist puts her own family under the microscope, she uncovers plenty of secrets, drama, and magic. Flora has a gift. She can predict to the day when someone will die. So when she decides she wants a living wake, a potty, to bring her family and community together to celebrate the long life she's led. Her sisters are surprised. Has Flo, has Floor foreseen her own death or someone else's? Does she have any other motives? She refuses to tell her sisters, Matilda, Pastora, and Camilla. But Floor isn't the only person with secrets. Matilda has tried for decades to cover the extent of her husband's infidelity, but she must now confront the true state of her marriage. Pastora is typically the most reserved sister, but Flora's wake motivates this driven woman to solve her siblings' problems. Camilla is the youngest sibling and often the forgotten one, but she's decided to no longer wait to be taken for granted. And the next generation, cousins Ona and Yadi, face turmoil of their own. 
Yadi is reuniting with her first love, who was imprisoned while they were both still kids. Ona is married for years and attempting to conceive. Ona must decide whether it's worth to keep trying to have a child and the anthropology research that's begun to feel lackluster. Alrighty, so our next one is a memoir, The Many Lives of Mama Love by Lara Love Hodden. From suburban soccer mom to convicted felon to best-selling ghostwriter, her remarkable true story is totally riveting. No one expects the police to knock on the million dollar, two-story home of the perfect cul-de-sac housewife. But soccer mom, Lara Love Harden, has been hiding a shady secret. She's funding her heroin addiction by stealing her neighbor's credit cards. Lara is convicted of 32 felonies and becomes inmate S32179. She learns that jail is a class system with a power structure that is somewhere between an adolescent sleepover party and Lord of the Flies. Furniture is made from tampon boxes and Snickers bars are currency. But Lara quickly finds the rules and brings love and healing to her fellow inmates as she climbs the social ladder to become the shot caller showing that jailhouse politics aren't that different from the PTA meetings she used to attend. When she's released, she reinvents herself as a ghostwriter. Now she's legally co-opting other people's identities and getting to meet Oprah, mediate with the Dalai Lama, and have dinner with the Archbishop Desmond Tutu. But the shadow of her past follows her. Shame is a poison worse than heroin. There is no way to de detox. Lara must learn how to forgive herself and others, navigate life as a felon on probation, prove to herself that she is more good than bad, and much more. Alrighty, so the next one is a literary fiction. It's called Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. One biracial family grapples with the meaning of happiness and their own lives when their father suddenly goes missing. We didn't call the police right away. These are the first words of this extraordinary novel about a biracial Korean American family in Virginia whose lives are upended when their beloved father and husband goes missing. Mia the irreverent, hyper-analytical, 20-year-old daughter has an explanation for everything, which is why she isn't initially concerned when her father and younger brother Eugene don't return from a walk in a nearby park. They must have lost their phone or stopped for an errand somewhere, but by the time Mia's brother runs through the front door, bloody and alone, it becomes clear that the father in this tight-knit family is missing, and the only witness is Eugene, who has a rare genetic condition, angel, angel man syndrome, and cannot speak. What follows is both a ticking clock investigation into the whereabouts of a father and an emotionally rich portrait of a family whose most personal secrets just may be the heart of his disappearance, full of shocking twists and fascinating questions of love, language, and human connection. Happiness Falls is a mystery, a family drama, and a novel of profound physiological inquiry. Alrighty, so our next one is also another literary fiction. It's called Shock Hot by Emily Habeck. Prepare to have a big bite taken out of your heart by this lyrical med meditation on marriage, grief, and carnivorous fish. For Lewis and Wren, their first year of marriage is also their last. A few weeks after the wedding, Lewis receives a rare diagnosis. 
he will retain most of his consciousness, memories, and intellect, but his physical body will gradually turn into a great white shark. Da 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 da. As Lewis develops the features and impulses of one of the most predatory creatures in the ocean, his complicated artist heart struggles to make peace with his unfulfilled dreams. At first, Wren internally resists her husband's fate. Is there a way for them to be together after Lewis changes? Then a glimpse of Lewis's developing carnivorous natures activates long repressed memories for Wren, whose story facilitates between her childhood living on a houseboat in Oklahoma, her time with a college ex-girlfriend, and her unusual friendship with a woman pregnant with twin birds. This is not your ordinary story. Woven throughout this bold novel is a story of Wren's mother, Angela, who becomes pregnant with Wren at the with Wren at fifteen in an abusive relationship amidst her parents' crumbling marriage. In the presence, all of Wren's grief eventually collides, and she is forced to make an impossible choice. And the one I chose, like I said, sometimes it's hard to choose. I couldn't pick just one. I picked two books this month. So the, this one, the first one I picked is called, it's from Lisa Jewell, and it's None of This is True. And this one is a thriller. So it's a podcaster and our subject's lives become increasingly intertwined in this twisty tale where fact and fiction compete. Celebrating her 45th birthday at her local pub, popular podcaster Alex Summers crosses path with an unassuming woman called Josie Fair. Josie, it turns out, is also celebrating her 45th birthday. They are, in fact, birthday twins. A few days later, Alex and Josie pump bump into each other again this time outside Alex's children's school. Josie has been listening to Alex's podcast and thinks she might be an interesting subject for her series. She is, she tells Alex, on the cusp of great changes in her life. Josie's life appears to be strange and complicated, and although Alex finds her unsettling, she can't quite resist the temptation to keep making the podcast. Slowly, she starts to realize that Josie has been hiding some very dark secrets. And before she knows it, Josie has inveigled her way into Alex's life and into her home. But as quickly as she arrives, Josie disappears. Only then does Alex discover that Josie has left a terrible and terrifying legacy in her wake, and that Alex has become the subject of her own true crime podcast, with her life and her family's lives under mortal threat. Alrighty, so the next one is a horror story. It's called Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Connes. And, you know, I read one of her other books through the Book of the Month Club, and it was called The Hacienda. And this one, oh my God, I absolutely loved this book. This is the first book that I did a little bit of a review on. I actually, on one of my vlogs, I read, or it could have been on one of the Book of the Month um, videos, I actually read parts of this book. Oh, it was... I was so into this book, I just did not want to put it down. It was so, so good. So when I saw that this author had another book, I had to grab it. So let me hold up the cover here. So again, it's Vampires, El Norte, Isabel Cañas. So I'm excited for this one too. Alrighty, so sink your teeth 
into this sumptuous border tale full of cowboys, forbidden romance, and things that go bump in the night. As the daughter of a rancher in 1840s Mexico, Nina knows a thing or two about monsters. Her home has long been threatened by tensions with Anglo settlers from the north, but something more sinister lurks in the ranch at night, something that drains men of their blood and leaves them for dead, something that once attacked Nina nine years ago. Believing Nina dead, Nestor has been on the run from his grief ever since moving from ranch to ranch, working as a vaquero. But no amount of drink can dispel the night terrors of sharp teeth. No woman can erase his childhood sweetheart from his mind. When the United States attacks Mexico in 1846, the two are brought abruptly together on the road to war. Nina, as a querendera, a healing striving to prove her worth to her father so that he does not marry her off to a stranger, and Nestor as a member of the auxiliary cavalry of ranches and vaqueros. But the shock of their reunion and Nina's rage at Restor, Nestor for seemingly abandoning her years ago is quickly overshadowed by the appearance of nightmare made flesh. And unless Nina and Nestor work through their past and face the future together, neither will survive to see the dawn. Dun, dun, dun. I tell you, does that not sound good? Yeah. So looking forward to reading both these books, this one and the podcast one that none of this is true being a try you know and I do like to listen to crime true crime podcast and YouTube videos things like that so this book just seems like it's right up the alley vampires of El Norte dark shadows fan 60s hello I'm still a dark shadows fan and of course because this author did La Hacienda that I love I just had to grab those books. So let me know, what do you think of these books here? We had quite a few good choices. The shock one seemed a little ooh, out there, but it is kind of like one, it said literary fiction, but I think it's really one of those kind of magical fantasy books. But anyway, let me know, what did you pick this month? Which of these books would have been something that you picked? And what do you think of these two books that I picked? So anyway, I wanna thank you guys so much for stopping in, spending a little bit of time with me. And you notice I, well, I've had to, uh, in between sometimes I kind of fix my bangs, but I do have that rubber band that's right here that is helping to hold this in place so it's not falling off. So if you do have a problem with some wigs that just want to slide off your head, that little thing that I got here on Timu, and that is a big, big help because this wig with the braids in the back, it just constantly wants to keep falling off and it, it stayed pretty much in place other than, you know, the bangs from moving my eyebrows and stuff wants to move too. So anyway, before I lose my voice again today, I want to thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. You guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I hope everyone goes out, has a fabulous, fabulous week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Be kind. Be happy. Enjoy life. Have some fun. Love you guys so much, and we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.